And listeners of this program, viewers of this program, will know that uh, wage inequality has gotten uh, completely out of control in this country. They will also know that CEO pay is very much out of control in this country. But what some of us may not have known until now was the extent to which our government is indirectly, perhaps inadvertently, subsidizing this kind of CEO wage inequality. But our next guest has co-authored a report that shines a light on that very issue. Sarah Anderson is uh, the director of the Global Economy Project at the Institute for Policy Studies here in Washington, D.C. She's also co-editor of inequality.org, which does a lot of uh, great reporting on this issue. And uh, their new report, uh, and uh, correct me, you may have a correction, you may be the sole author of this report, I'm not sure, but this new report on Executive Excess 2018 shows how taxpayers are subsidizing these corporate pay guests. She joins us now. So first of all, Sarah, thanks for coming back on the program. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Secondly, um, okay, well, I don't want to summarize your report for you, so tell us what you found. Yeah, well, one thing I want to make sure everyone knows is that there's an amazing new source of data to get at this issue of the gap between CEO and worker pay. And this was a, a hard-fought progressive victory that not everyone knows about yet. So just let me say that it was in the Dodd-Frank financial reform bill back in 2008 to require publicly held companies to report the gap between their CEO pay and their median worker pay. And it took us eight years um, actually to get that uh, uh, actually in motion and the, the data just started coming out this year. And so we made use of that data to look at what, what are the pay gaps between the companies that rake in the most lucrative government contracts and uh, federal subsidies, because these are the ones that are relying Relying the most on our taxpayer dollars, and we want to know how they're, um, uh, you know, rewarding people within the company. And what we found, I think, it, it should be very shocking, which is that about two thirds of the top 50 government contractors and the top 50 corporate recipients of federal subsidies pay their CEO more than 100 times their median worker. And so we're, we're using the, these figures to try to raise awareness of this. We don't think most Americans want their money to be supporting these big gaps. In fact, polls show that across the political spectrum, people are really outraged about these gaps. And, and so there's a lot of potential, I think, for bipartisan action on this. You know, I, I think it's a very important point. You mentioned that polls show that people, uh, most uh, Americans or the typical American believes that the, t the CEO's pay should not it be more than six times, I think the figure was, uh, the median worker's pay or the average worker's pay. Uh, also, I think it's important for folks to understand that this is not some force of nature at work, that if you go back a few decades in this country, you didn't see these kinds of wild elements of inequality. Uh, and I think the point that you make with this report, which is so important, is that uh, we are, as a government, and therefore as a, as a population, as a citizenry, we are in effect subsidizing this, at least that's the way I'd put it, by, uh, by giving, whether it's, it's government subsidies to these corporations or lucrative government contracts, we are not only not doing anything to prevent this kind of inequality from taking place, we are in effect fueling it or feeding it through the federal government. Is that a fair statement in your view? That, that's absolutely true. And I think that the way our tax Pair dollars should, are spent should reflect social values. And here's a case where it is not reflecting social values because, as I mentioned before, across the political spectrum, people are outraged about these huge gaps in CEO pay. In fact, one poll by Stanford found that a majority of both Democrats and Republicans actually want to put a cap on the amount of money CEOs can make relative to what their workers make. Um, the policies we recommend in, the, in our report are don't even go that far, but we think there's a lot that can be done to 
use the power of the public purse to crack down on these companies that refuse to share the wealth. So we can put tax penalties on them. And there is a, a strong precedent for that. The city of Portland, Oregon started this year putting a surtax on companies that pay their CEO more than 100 times their median worker pay. That's something that could be replicated at the city, state, and, and the federal level. There's a federal bill to do that, and uh, about a half a dozen states are looking at bills uh, to, to do that as well. We could also use our contracting and our subsidy policies um, to encourage companies to narrow these gaps. Um, Jeremy Corbyn, the head of the, the UK Labour Party, said that if he's in power, he will deny government contracts to companies that pay their CEO more than 25 times what the lowest paid worker at that company makes. So that, that's another thing we can do. Now that we have this information about the gaps within specific companies, we can really hold them accountable and make sure that we're not propping up these very harmful business models. You know, it's very interesting. I was thinking as you were talking, and, and I believe we, we talked about the Portland Initiative at one point. People were, were, were uh, you lobbyists and so on, were predicting gloom and doom for Portland if that law passed. I don't believe there's been gloom and doom in Portland, but, um, <laughs> you know, I, I was thinking about the mechanics of how the world might change if we did some of the, the things you were describing. And, for example, if... If we had a Jeremy Corbyn type president in this country who said no government contracts to companies that pay their CEO more than 25 times the median workers pay, then you start to think about, well, what would the shareholders of a Raytheon or somebody else uh, that's very dependent on government contracting, whether federal or state or local, what would the shareholders, if it was a publicly traded company, do if all of a sudden they realized that they had a choice between paying their CEO an enormous amount of money and seeing the, the uh, revenue of their, their corporation drop substantially, or maybe kind of right-sizing that CEO pay and keeping those, uh, those profitable government contracts, you might see shareholders start to step up and say, you know, we think our CEO is overpaid here. Don't you think that's a realistic scenario? Well, they certainly should. I mean, if you look at a report, you see the percentage of revenues uh, that the top 50 government contractors get from these government contracts. And in some cases, it's just absurd. The number one federal contractor is Lockheed Martin. Last year, 97% of their revenue came from federal contracts. And so if they were not qualifying for those contracts, believe me, the shareholders would be screaming. Um, there's the, the top five contractors are all part of the military industrial complex. Um, a couple of the others made over half of their revenue from, from this. So we have a lot of power here uh, to change this dynamic. And uh, it, it's important to say companies would still have the choice. They could continue to have these extreme gaps. Um, but it, and under the recommendations we make, they'd have to pay more taxes and they, they probably wouldn't be getting um, government contracts or subsidies either. And frankly, we think, hey, if they can afford to pay their CEO more in um, a a day than many of their workers make in a year, they don't need our, our taxpayer money. Yeah, I love that point. I think that's a great point. Now, I do have to tell you, Sarah, by the way, that, and again, we're talking with Sarah Anderson of the Institute for Policy Studies about this great new report on CEO pay among federal contractors. I do have to say whether it's the GEO, the, the GEO group that runs uh, for-profit prisons and family immigration detention centers, whether it's some of the defense contractors we're, we're talking about, me, Personally, I wouldn't mind if they were out of business altogether, but if they're going to exist and they're going to take government largesse, then uh, you mentioned also, by the way, in terms of subsidies, American Airlines received more than $16 million in subsidies, while the CEO uh, made uh, nearly 200 times, 195 times the median, the firm's median worker pay. That shouldn't happen. But there's another dimension of this I wanted to talk to you about before uh, we go to, which is the fact that it's not just the inequality, in my opinion, that's a problem here, although that's a terrible problem. W the way these CEOs get paid gives them incentives to think not of the 
public's interests or their employees' interests or even necessarily of their customers' interests, which in the case of these uh, these employers is largely us, the federal, uh, the people of the United States. But but it encourages them to manage to the, with their various types of bonuses and incentives to the quarterly bottom line, to the way the stock looks at any given moment, and certainly year over year. It's not encouraging them to invest. It's not encouraging them right. to be responsible. It's not encouraging them to manage in such a way that both the management and the workers share in the success of the company. It really is creating a kind of cutthroat, uh, uh, you know, red in tooth and claw style of management, isn't it? That's absolutely right. All the incentives right now are set up so that the CEO wants to uh, inflate his own paycheck in the short term in ways that could be very damaging for the company, for the country, <laughs> for democracy, for the environment in the long term. Um, and, and those can be slashing uh, employees, uh, cutting investment in training and, and human resources uh, capacity building, um, dumping your toxics, uh, various things that can can uh, inflate their pay because so much of their pay is now based on the stock price. And one of the, the ways that this is playing out right now is we're seeing the windfalls from the tax reform um, going into uh, buying back company stock. Why, why right. are they doing that? It's a way to artificially inflate the, the value of their stock, which in turn inflates the, the paychecks of the top CEO. So this is not a uh, good from a sustainable business perspective. It's not good from an inequality perspective or a democracy perspective. And I just want to share in the Portland situation where they passed the tax penalty on companies with big gaps, the deciding vote in that um, in that vote in the Portland Council was by a guy who um, drew from his own personal experience, having worked at a big cooperatively owned engineering company that had a very narrow pay gap. And he felt that he knew from that that experience that that narrower pay gaps really bring out the best in in his brought out the best in his colleagues made them a very you know highly effective and profitable company but you know profitable and in an equitable uh, way and and that's why he voted for it because he thought it was a good it made sense from a good business perspective so that speaks to the potential here for building coalitions around these issues um, to use the CEO to worker pay ratio numbers to, to crack down on these companies because you can draw people who care about this from, from many different angles. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And, and I think I want to end, Sarah Anderson, by talking about the corporations you've found with the largest pay gaps, the, I would argue, inappropriately named Yum Brands, <laughs> which is uh, KFC and Pizza Huts in uh, Pizza Huts in <laughs> Mongolia, uh, that they're getting a $7.25 yeah. million dollar taxpayer backed loan from the Overseas Private Investment Corporation, and that they paid their CEO 1,358 times as much as its median employee in 2017. Walmart paid uh, its CEO 1,188 times uh, the median pay and is getting government purchases, as, you, as your report puts it, of everything from TVs to donuts to consumer unfriendly $5 gift cards. You also make a great point here, which is that they're also benefiting from indirect subsidies since a large share of their workers earn so little that they're on public assistance. This to me is just unforgivable and outrageous. And I would add, by the way, that Yum Brands is also getting an indirect subsidy when we have to pay for the health consequences of the kinds of foods they mm -hmm. sell. And I mean that quite seriously. Um, so what do we do about it? You know, these are outrageous examples. Uh, what would you see as, as the way to rebalance extreme, you know, offenders like these? Yeah, well, you do have to come at it from different angles. I've talk, been talking a lot about using these pay ratio um, numbers to, to crack down through our tax policies, our contracting, our subsidy policies. I understand Senator Bernie Sanders is going to be introducing a bill soon that's going to crack down on this indirect subsidy, where when you're paying your workers so low that they have to rely on public assistance, um, he has he has said he's going to be uh, introducing that in a number of days. So I think we 
we do need to come at it from some different angles. But the overarching theme here is that taxpayers should not be subsidizing extreme inequality. And right now we are doing that and we need to spread the word about that because I really believe that this is a, a uniting issue. People are so fed up with these overpaid CEOs. Um, they might not know that we can do something about it, but we can do something about it. We need to spread the word about that. Well, I think that's a great point, and I think it's a great point on which to end since we're out of time. So Sarah Anderson, who, a director of the Global Economy Project at the Institute for Policy Studies, thanks for your work on this terrific report, and thanks for coming on the program to discuss it. Thanks so much.